Hi, everyone. My name is Siobhan Lancaster. I'm the Managing Director and CEO of 92 Energy. 92 Energy is an ASX-listed uranium exploration company. We're exploring for uranium in the Athabasca Basin of Canada. We've recently had some great exploration success with the GMZ Discovery, which we've just uh, put some great drill results out for. And today I'm joined by Steve Blower, who is uh, one of the technical directors on our board, and we're very fortunate to have him to chat a little bit about what our results mean and uh, interpret them for the market. Well, hello to both of you, uh, and hello, Steve. We've not met before. Um, well, we we kind of got in contact because we want to understand some of the uh, press releases that have come out recently, certainly around the drilling. Um, Steve, tell me this. So, what, what's your background? Sure. So, uh, I'm a geologist, Matt. Um, I've worked since about 2006 uh, in Saskatchewan in the Athabasca Basin for uh, a few different companies. Um, I was VP exploration for Denison Mines. Um, uh, we had the, I had the pleasure of being part of a group that found the Griffin um, basement hosted uranium deposit um, with Denison. And then I, I, I joined uh, ISO Energy after that. Um, and we had some success there also as a team uh, in finding the hurricane uh, uranium deposit. So, yeah. Okay, okay. So, a few names there we all recognize, Denison uh, and ISO Energy, um, both doing extremely well. Um, so, Siobhan, tell me this. So, wh why have you brought Steve in? I mean, what, what, what's, what's his actual task? What's the problems that he's um, solving for you? Sure. So I thought it would just be really useful to explain our really um, fantastic results that we just put out to the market. So um, we released uh, our final drilling results from the winter 2022 drilling program, um, and we had some great success on our final four holes. So I thought it would be great um, for Steve to talk through what those radioactivity measures mean and sort of where the good drill results are and what it all means going forward, uh, given that this is quite an early stage discovery. Right. Um, do you know? A bit, uh, well, let's let's do that. But um, I, I guess what I'd also like a little bit of help with is because um, we're seeing um, lots of different ways of reporting data. And I have to say, we get a lot of inbound about you know you, you're talking about radioactivity. We're talking about CPS. We're talking percentages. It's it's all kind of a little bit. I don't quite know how to measure like for like in this space. Can you can you give us a bit of clarity about why you you use those different uh, mechanisms first? Sure. So, I mean, intersections of radioactivity, you know, are a material thing for us. And of course, it happens right away. We, we get to measure radioactivity in the drill core as it comes out of the ground. And so it's, you, you don't want to hold on to that information. You know, it's not, it's not the correct thing to do. So we report it and we report it the best way we can. And that's in counts per second, CPS, which is the, the units of radioactivity that, that are measured. So, yeah, um, it gives an a, approximate idea of, of what sort of grade you're going to get ahead of real chemical assays. But those typically take, you know, four to six to eight weeks to, to get back from the lab. So in the meantime, we have this, these radioactivity measurements that give us some idea of, of what's to come. Right. And are, they, do they, are there any, um, can, can they be wrong occasionally? Can you get a strong signal and the assays come back and then they don't kind of match up. Sure, absolutely. Right. The, the correlation between counts per second and grade is a bit tenuous. Um, tends to be a bit of a, a cloud on a on an X Y plot. So, um, so yeah, we don't we don't actually make that conversion and and, and publish it ourselves. It just gives us a general idea of, of what's to come. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, look, you've done some drilling recently. We, we, we've seen press releases, so um, you're obviously pleased with the way that's going. But what, so, if you can tell us a little bit about that, that, and then what it tells you, or how it informs you as to what you do next, that would be really useful. Yeah. Sure. So, um, you know, we've, we've we've got some good, strong indications of of elevated radioactivity in almost all of the holes that we've drilled at the at the GMZ, and um, so. I mean, we are going to use that information uh, along with the assays that are coming to then design our follow-up programs. And, and we see some vectors, we see some key geological parameters that, that we're going to use to, uh, to help steer us in, in the direction of, of more mineralization. Right. And so would you class this as a, as a discovery? And we've seen companies come on here and go, we've, we've got strong radioactivity, it's a discovery. And you're like, how many got the assays back yet? And we're like, 
Wow. Okay. How, what about you? Yeah, sure. No, it's a discovery for sure. Um, there's no question. Um, it's a it's a new deposit of, of uranium in the Athabasca Basin, and, um, and it's very exciting. Um, you know, we we have the only hole that we actually have assay information for at the GMZ is that first hole that was drilled in the area late last year, the last hole of last year's program. And so we already know that that, that hole had five and a half meters of 0.12% U308, um, which is a pretty spectacular result for the first hole into a new area. The, the results that we've gotten on this follow-up program, uh, especially the last four um, drill holes are arguably better. So um, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. So can, can, again, just in terms of this kind of comp stuff, this you know, peer uh, analysis that we'd, we'd, we'd like to be able to do, so, so 0.12%, you say that's mm -hmm. good. It, it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, what, 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 what does good mm -hmm. look like and what does sort of average look like? Yeah, so that's the trick, right? Um, you know, for the Athabasca Basin, that's not exactly high grade for sure. Um, uh, we, uh, but compared to everything else in the world, uh, that is reasonable grade. Um, but I think the key is that, you know, often there are some low grade fringes around the outside of, of these Athabasca deposits. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we see that this system is very large, first of all, right? It's got a big footprint. It's the alteration is, uh, uh, is intense and, it, and there's a big volume of it. And so that leads us to think that there could be uh, zones of much better grade in this area. And so, so that's what we're, we're doing. We're, we're vectoring in on that. Can we, can we have a look at, um, you know, where, where you're drilling and then, you know, what, what I'm interested in is, you know, the so what bit, which is, so what does it mean? So what do you do next? And, you know, how do you come at it? Is that, is that possible to kind of a look? Maybe we'll just share a screen or something. Ah, oh, there you go. There we go. There you go. Yeah. So um, what, are we look, what, are we, what are we looking at there? What, what, what's this sure. map so, of? I mean, the background is magnetic, so it just gives you some idea of the geological trends in the area. Um, and, um, um, and we see a bunch of stars in there that are the uh, intersections of elevated radioactivity at the GMZ. Uh, all but one of those stars is from this year's program that we've just wrapped up. Uh, the, the darkest yellow star kind of in the middle there is GEM004, the only hole that we drilled here last year. Everything else is, is this year's program. Um, and I, I think really importantly, you know, our threshold for mineralization at the GMZ uh, is 300 counts per second on the, on the handheld scintillometer. And so everything that has a star there is mineralized. Uh, and that's 11 out of the 12 holes that were drilled there. So this mineralization is widespread. Uh, and, and I think, you know, most importantly, those last four holes, as Siobhan said, um, are thick intersections. Um, you know, we're talking 15 to 20, even 22 meters, I think, was our, was our longest intersection uh, of continuous radioactivity uh, and uh, including some um, stronger radioactivity than we've seen in any of the other holes. So um, I think what we're starting to see is a, is a really clear vector there as we step away from that initial hole. Uh, and, and we're seeing that to the west and to the southwest um, that uh, the system seems to be improving. So well, yeah. tell, tell me about that. I mean, so if you don't mind getting a little bit more detailed on that one, so what are, you, what are you seeing in the west that you're not seeing in the east? Yeah, just more radioactivity and thicker intersections. Um, so right. Stronger radioactivity. It's as simple as that. So, okay. So, so then what do yeah. you, what do you do about it? I mean, in terms of the, the, the drilling or allocation of capital for, for drilling, you, you would come at it how? Yeah. Well, we have to continue to, to uh, drill out in those directions. That's, that's the bottom line. We need a follow up program that it continues to expand this mineralization. Um, it, we could easily be right on the edge of something uh, very significant. So right. the, the, the setting is all, is all, just exactly what we need. You know, we see, as I mentioned previously, really strong alteration in all of those holes. And it's a big area. And you have to remember too, that base load is drilling about four or 500 meters away to the south. And they're seeing similar results basically, right? Uh, very strong alteration, big fault zones, 
uh, and mineralization in many of their holes. So, so it's a system that has a very large footprint and that's rare in the Athabasca. These things tend to be very small um, uh, volumetrically and, and this one is large. So um, that that's very encouraging for us. And, and uh, yeah, I think that there's a really good chance that there's something quite significant. So, so in terms of step outs, when you're, when you're hunting something, like you, you've done it at Denison, you've done it at ISO Energy. When you're doing this step mm. outs and you're kind of chasing this ra radioactivity uh, signatures, do you, do you go 500 meters out? Is it, I mean, do you go a kilometer? I mean, I, I'm not quite sure of the, the scale of this mm. that, that we're looking at. Sure. Yeah. So there's a scale bar down there at the bottom, and and really the that spread of stars is about 280 meters um, by about 90 meters. And so, no, we're we're much smaller than the, than the 500 meter sort of step outs that you're talking about. And I think one of the keys here too, um, Matt, is that this is basement hosted mineralization. It tends to be uh, highly structurally controlled, much like high grade uh, gold deposits, really in their in their shape and size. Uh, and so, no, typically, you know, if you're onto some basement mineralization, you need to be down into the 25, 30, 50 meters max for your step outs. Um, otherwise, you could step right over uh, a whole pile of really high value rock. Okay, that's, that's interesting. And in, in terms of the way that um, these bodies form, you, you're, we, we, well, I think we've, I think even in your PowerPoint, you indicated these sort of, the way that these structures work, and they do, do they tend to go quite deep? Certainly, the structures go deep. Absolutely, right. yeah. Um, mineralization is often uh, better up or around the unconformity, so so up higher. But uh, it doesn't always have to be that way. Sometimes mineralization uh, it picks up in intensity as you go away from the unconformity. You know, many of the really good basement hosted deposits are examples of that. Um, Eagle Point, uh, Arrow. And so, and so, so, if I, so if I look at um, how, and well, maybe there's one for you, Siobhan, I don't know. Um, um, in terms of what what do you need to see um, before you kind of, I guess, press the button or you collectively decide to press the button on throwing more money at this thing? Are these things like slow and steady sets of discoveries or is there a moment where you go, well, actually, we, we, we've got a very good sense of what we're looking at here. Um, we're going to be drilling a lot more, and that, if that means going and getting some more money or allocating more money from your, your current balance sheet. What, what's, what's that moment? Because th that usually reflects quite a, a movement in, in, in share price because you're indicating to the market we're very confident about what we've got here. Yeah, sure. So, um, look, I think we're we're getting towards that moment um, for sure. These three holes are, are certainly given us a lot of confidence, um, but we'll really uh, hopefully have a much better idea of that moment um, from the follow up uh, drill program. Um, you know, it could be that you know we we step away twenty meters and suddenly start hitting uh, you know humongous grades and uh, big intercepts. Um, but you know that really would wouldn't be until that next drill program, I would imagine. Um, perhaps Steve, you have a have a have a better uh, answer than that. This is the time to be aggressive. Honestly, you know, you, you just don't hit uranium mineralization very often in the Athabasca Basin. Uh, lots of people have worked their whole lives there and, and have never drilled the intersections that we have. So, um, so yeah, no, we need to be. Uh, Need to be following up aggressively for sure. Okay, and what's that mean in terms of timeline? We mean aggressive the rest of this year, aggressive now. Both those things. Um, okay. But but definitely the uh, the next program. You know, we can't wait to get back out there. Um, uh, we've got to drill to the west, to the southwest of those intersections, and and uh, yeah, find the. Find the heart of this thing. Well, I mean, Siobhan, there's a there's a kind of playbook it seems for the Athabasca Basin. You know, a lot of companies have created a lot of value uh, very very quickly. Certainly in this environment, the uh, uranium space uh, is getting quite warm. We looked at spot price up to sixty three yesterday. I I think um, you've got Russia, Ukraine, um, causing you know sanctions across across the board, or imminently uh, that will be the case. Um, it's a different universe. But some things need to carry on. You guys need to do things the right way in the, in in this environment and take advantage of, of of what is a very positive uranium environment. So, how are you hoping to play this this year? And what's the end game for you guys? Look, we're, we've always been very systematic systematic in everything that we've done uh, since the very beginning. So we'll continue to be systematic in terms of the way we drill, 
um, uh, and the way we sort of explore in general. Um, we're a very technically minded team, so um, we will continue along that path. Obviously, this is the time to be aggressive with this market. We went out with a very clear mission statement that, and the aim that we went out with when we listed less than a year ago was to find potentially a strategic asset here. So that's what we're looking for. And that's really very much what we're hoping we're on the edge of at this point in time. So if that's the case, we'll go out there, we'll very aggressively drill it. Right. So strategic for whose benefit though? Because I want to understand what's upcoming at buying into. Are you a technical team who are good at exploration, but then someone else, you, you want to offload that someone else to move this thing forward? Because these things have, certainly in Canada, have, have long gest gestation periods. So do you want to continue on the hunt for more discoveries and offload this or can you build something up yourself? Look, I mean, I always go back to the extract story because that's my background. It's very easy to create a lot of value if you're onto a very good discovery. And I would hope that we would uh, bring it through all the stages of the life cycle whereby we can create the maximum amount of value for shareholders we can with this particular deposit that we have if, if it indeed is a large strategic deposit. But we really need to do that next drill program. And I, I, I feel like I'm repeating what I said last time, but, you know, really we do need to do that uh, follow-up drill program. And really we're only taking a, a, a short two-month uh, break um, this time around. Um, so it's really while the snow melts and then we'll be back in, everything's already there. We've just literally got to fly back in and and start the drill rigs again. Good stuff. Well, look, guys, look, thanks, th thanks for the update. I just saw the um, the headlines and 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 the the, the articles, and I thought, okay, th th things are moving along nicely since we met in December. Um, stay in touch. Let us let us know how this next uh, set of drilling goes, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks very much, Matt. Just before we go, uh, I just would like to give a quick shout out to the crew that we had up at. Uh, yeah, up at Gemini, this uh, this program uh, run by Kane and Sergey Oglu, our VP of Exploration, who's a heck of a great uh, young geologist who, uh, yeah, he's got a lot of experience and uh, he's drilled a lot of uranium and really knows what he's doing. So, yeah. And um, I got to say uh, many thanks to Siobhan also, who, uh, you know, is um, just one of the best leaders I've seen. So, 